Don't you hate it when your sheet is detected? Your threads could be why. Let's explore how threads work, what malicious ones look like, and the solution to the problem. So the first thing that you need to know is whenever a new thread is created, base thread init thunk is called. We get this address here, we set it to the original function, then we hook the function here, and then we just let our program just go in a while true loop. And up here, we have our base thread init thunk hook. So now that you know that, what we can do is we have a few variables here. Argument is basically what um, this argument gets provided here. So whenever you call create thread, it's this argument right here, LP parameter. And whenever you call load library, this argument would equal to load library A, or if you're manual mapping, then this would be the address of your shellcode. So we're not gonna worry about that too much, but we're gonna worry about the start address of the thread. So if we start this up here, we got GH injector, inject using load library. As you can see, base thread init thunk hook called. Here's our start address, and here's our other start address. Now, if you look at these two over here, this start address starts with 1540, and this is like 7FFF. And the interesting thing about these is this one looks like it's just some randomly allocated memory, but this one looks like it's an actual valid address. So if we take this, get our cheat engine loaded up here, and then we enter this address here. As you can see, it's somewhere in NTDLL something something, right? But if we take this address here, this start address, we'll go right here, and we'll sure. control G. As you can see, this is just non-existent anymore. The shell code has been freed up for our load library A injection. So what we can do to detect our load library A injector here, or a suspicious thread, as you might say, is very simple. All we'll do is memory basic information info, and we'll call virtual query if virtual query start address and info size of info then we'll write out a check here if info dot type is not equal to mem image this is not a valid image then all we're going to do is print out debug print invalid address thus will be 0x percent p start address Print that out. So let's start that up here. Get our injector. Inject. Oh, there we go. Invalid address. Sus. Right here. See? That's our address. Bam. Our malicious thread has just been detected. And another way which you can detect this too is actually pretty easy. Copy this right here, the 7FF part, which is legitimate. And then all you do here is this. Then what we're going to do is just do u long 64 start equals 0x now we'll just change everything to 0 so now what we're going to do is if pass this to a u long 64 start address is less than the start which is the value here we can also say this one is a weird value by print invalid address weird and we can print that out again start address Put that up, check our DLL, make it bigger. And as you can see, both of those checks worked. So what you could do in a combination is you can add this check and this check to just like an and and statement. So that's all there really is to detecting malicious threads. You could go further in and you know uh, manually check these addresses by seeing if they belong in a certain module or something like that. But that's kind of what this check is right here. But you could check, you know, if this if this is in the text section or whatever, right? So that's pretty much all there is for detecting malicious threads. Now we can move on to avoiding all of this in general and staying undefined. So let's get to that. So the first thing that you need to know is whenever a new thread is created, base thread init thunk is called. That's why we're hooking this function, right? So if we go to GitHub and we go to a load library A injector, for example, right? If we load library A inject with the GH injector here, we go load library and then we inject, right? 
See, we get detected, right? The reason why is because right here, I'll show you a real world example. Right here, we are allocating memory. This is where our DLL path goes, right? We allocate memory in the process. We write the string to the memory. We create a thread. We call load library. That's the start address, which is load library. Then we pass in the address of our string. So then inside the process, load library gets called. Your DLL gets loaded in, right? Whenever you create this thread, that start address right here, this, that's what that is. That's literally the address of load library in your program, right? So that's going to raise a lot of flags, and that's how you'll get detected like that, right? So the same thing applies with manual mapping. When you're ma manual mapping, right, and you have the start routine function here in the guided hacking injector, there's multiple different methods you can use. NT create thread X, hijack thread, all this other stuff. To bypass the detection vector, all you have to do is just avoid creating a thread. Literally avoid calling create remote thread, NT create thread X, all that stuff. So instead, what you can do is hijack a thread, which will just take an existing thread and let your shell code run through that thread. Or you can do something called a kernel callback, or you can do QUSER APC, fake VEH. So now, if I restart the program here, start it up again, bring it up here. Go to manual map, fake VEH. As you can see, there it is. Now, yes, base thread init thunk cook gets called, but see, we have no suspicious addresses here, so that's good. And the only reason why I'm using fake VEH is because these other ones don't work in my program, just because it's such a simple program. There's not really anything, you know, that, there's no other threads you can hijack. There's literally just the main thread, right? So, um, and I don't have like an actual game window on my program and queue user apc doesn't work and kernel callbacks don't work either but if you use these options you know shellcode execution methods on other games i'm pretty sure they would work so that's really all there is guys to bypassing the detection vectors is literally just change your shellcode execution method when you're manual mapping or you know don't use old library a at all but that's that's really it um so that's going to wrap up this whole video. I hope you guys found it resourceful. If there's anything you need, like our guided hacking injector, you can always find it on our website, guidedhacking.com. And we'll see you next time. Peace.